right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, thanks a lot, Erica. Thank you for tuning in to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh will be taking your phone calls tonight at 412-575-2600. We definitely have a lot to talk about, including the Super Bowl matchup of the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. This is the fourth appearance for the Chiefs in the last five years. And one of the things I do want to discuss here tonight, and we'll get to a tweet later and also talk a little bit about this on the number one Cochran Sports Showdown at 1135 on KDK is where does Patrick Mahomes fit right now? I mean, he's gone to six straight AFC championship games. This is four out of five Super Bowls. Um, is he one of the greatest of all time? I think so. I think he's definitely in the top five quarterbacks of all time. I don't think he's in Tom Brady's caliber yet, but he's getting pretty close. Um, and, and I think with him under center, they can win any kind of game. They're always in a game, and that just goes to show you that you need a franchise quarterback uh, to play on an elite level consistently year in and year out, and it's something that the Steelers are searching for right now uh, since Ben Roethlisberger retired. You thought that Kenny Pickett would be the guy. Uh, as of right now, it doesn't look the case, but who knows? Maybe he wakes up and something happens next year and things click for him. Um, but I, I think there's going to have to be a battle there with Kenny Pickett. Hopefully they can re-sign Mason Rudolph, and we can talk a little bit about that. Um, and you, you, do you bring in another veteran, or do you draft a guy? They met with, uh, uh, I think they met in the East-West right, East Shrine Bowl. Uh, they met with the Florida State quarterback here today, so maybe they draft a guy like him. Uh, you're not going to draft a – I can tell you right now, if you think they're going to draft a, uh, a quarterback in the first or second round, it's probably not going to happen. They have too many other needs, too many other holes – um, they would probably go after someone later, uh, fourth, fifth, something like that, and then maybe potentially get a quarterback, a veteran quarterback on, out in free agency uh, and maybe see what happens with Mason Rudolph if he resigns and, and battling it out with Kenny Pickett. But I do want to get to the games today. They were, they were pretty entertaining. Um, you know, the one thing, Detroit, I, I was actually rooting for Detroit. They're a big underdog. I wanted to see him win. Um, and they had this game won, 21-7. to uh, Then a couple crucial plays in that game, a couple fourth down calls that I don't think anyone really agrees with. I mean, I understand Dan Campbell, Campbell is a gambler, but I don't know if you gamble at fourth and two or fourth and three on your own 20-yard line uh, when you're up 14. Uh, you kick it away. And uh, at that point, they gambled, they lost, the 49ers scored. All of a sudden, it's a seven-point game, then a fumble. And then uh, within two minutes, that game is tied. Uh, but another huge mistake you know, because he didn't get it on the first time on fourth down, they go for it late. He could have tied this game up at 27, uh, but he must have had a feeling that, that the 49ers, that the defense couldn't stop the 49ers. So he decided to go for it um, on fourth and three, and, and Jared Goff, his pass went incomplete, and the Niners went down the other way, and they ended up winning this one. But if you kick the field goal there, even if... San Francisco goes down and scores, you, you live to fight another day, and, and they didn't do that. So, um, you know, that was my problem with Detroit. I know a lot of people wanted to see him in it. Um, but, you know, the, the first game, you know, <laughs> it was all Kansas City, it seemed like, right from the beginning. Uh, Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, what a duo. Um, those two out there. Uh, Kelsey breaks the all-time receptions with those two guys. Uh, so, I mean, it, unbelievable how this team can do it with basically two players. I mean, they don't have an all-star cast, a wide receiver. Um, Isaiah Pacheco is good, uh, above average. Uh, he's not an all-star running back. I mean, I can name probably 10 guys that are better in the NFL. Uh, and this team just continues to win. And they, they found a way to beat maybe the, maybe the most dynamic uh, offensive team in the NFL because the Ravens can do just about it all. But what you, I don't understand about that Ravens game today is it's the best rushing attack in the NFL. And I think they called eight rushing plays, eight called rushing plays. Um, and they decided to throw it all over the place. That, that's not their game. They should have stuck with their game and just ran the ball. And uh, Lamar Jackson doesn't do it in a big game. And Patrick Mahomes does. And I think the, last week's game gave that team a ton of a ton of confidence going up to Buffalo and winning on the road because Kansas City didn't have to do that yet. Now they win in Buffalo. Now they win in Baltimore. Uh, you beat 
what I think are the two best teams in the AFC. Um, and right now, Kansas City is a two-point underdog in the Super Bowl to San Francisco. I think this will be a good one. Um, San Francisco has a ton of stars, and Kansas City has Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I think that duo is just tough to beat. So 412-575-2600 is the number. We can talk about the Lions, NFC Championship, or the AFC Championship if you want, or uh, the Steelers met with Arthur Smith. Um, right now, Arthur Smith, Thomas Brown so far. Zach Robinson is gone to Atlanta. Uh, I'm sure they're going to meet with a couple other candidates and maybe get this thing wrapped up in the next couple weeks. Um, but like to hear your opinion, who you'd like to see as a Steelers offensive coordinator. That's a, a major need for this team because if they want to get back to the AFC championship, they need to find the right offensive coordinator for this team and the pieces that they have right now. 412-575-2600 is the number. Back in a couple minutes. All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. This is our GMC tweet of the night. It's from Ryan Clark, the former Steelers safety. Patrick Mahomes retires today. He's the best I've ever seen, and there's no conversation. He goes into the hall with no vote. It's almost become laughable. We should probably stop critiquing regular season woes and struggles. Just wait until championship weekend and watch then. Um, I, I don't disagree with him. He might be the best of all time. Uh, right now, I think Tom Brady, the longevity and what he's been able to do. Uh, maybe when you get seven Super Bowls, we can start talking about who's the best of all time. But right now, uh, Patrick Mahomes is two and one in those Super Bowls. He has three. He's making his fourth appearance. And I think Kansas City has a really good shot at winning this game uh, just because of him. Uh, you know, that's what you need. You need a guy like him. There's not too many of those guys. And we obviously see it. There's a handful of guys like that in the NFL. Patrick Mahomes, uh, Josh Allen. Uh, we saw Lamar Jackson. We see a, a couple other of these quarterbacks. Um, around the, the NFL, and those teams are the teams that are usually uh, the, the cream that rises to the top. And when you don't have a quarterback, I don't care how good your team is, uh, more than likely the odds are stacked against you. So um, give me a call tonight, 412-575-2600. Let's go out to Gene in Wilkins Township. Gene, Mean Gene, what's up? Gene, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks for calling. Listen, I'm calling about the, the Detroit game today. Yeah. Of that was a good I one, right? Uh, rooting for Detroit, but three times they had the opportunity to kick field goals. Yeah. They didn't do it. That would have been nine points. But what did they end up losing by? Well, they ended up three. losing by They could have won that game by six points. Yeah. That game is on his shoulders. Well, he I, lost the game for him. Yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. I don't understand why you go for it up 14 points on your own 20. Uh, that was that was the one fourth down that I was very critical of. I, why do you do that? I understand being a gambler. And maybe you have a hunch and you, you, you think like, hey, I'm going to go for this. I think we're going to get it. But then because you didn't get that, now you're frustrated and now the game's tied and you feel like the momentum's gone completely the other way. So you go for it again on fourth and three uh, when you're at around the 30. It would have been like a 48 yarder at that point, which would have tied the game at 27. Um, and, and that's another fault right there. So between the, the two, though, if you look in the second half there, those two fourth down plays and then the fumble in the middle, that's kind of what lost the game for this team. Uh, I understand that you, you, he's emotional, Dan Campbell. I like the guy. Um, but I think when you get caught up in it, you got to put your emotions aside and you got to think realistically. Sometimes I know all of us are very critical, and I know you guys are always very critical of what Tomlin does, and maybe he isn't a gambler enough. And, um, you know, you, they, he th you think he should go for it. But this is, this is a reason why you don't go for it on your own 20 uh, when you're up 14 points. You kick it away, and you hope that your defense has been doing the job the entire game, and you, you continue to do that, and then you get the ball again. Uh, so, uh, look, I agree with you. Uh, I think at least, at least there, you know, at least it cost them a tie game when you look at it. Things maybe unravel differently throughout the game, but... Um, I would have kicked a field goal, a 48-yarder. Uh, you're, you're, <laughs> I mean, the weather conditions are, are good. You kick the field goal. The game's tied at 27. There's seven minutes to go. Even if San Francisco goes down and scores, you got a shot. You're going to have time. And they just ran out of time. Uh, all right, let's go out to Dave on the north side. How you doing, Dave? Yeah, I think, I think the Heinz, if the Heinz board don't get in the Hall of Fame in the next two years, Fitzgerald's going to sneak right in. I'm going to let you know about that right now. Who? Because I think uh, uh, Heinz Ward, yeah. if he doesn't get in the Hall of Fame this year, 
Fitzgerald's going to come around the corner in the next two years because it's going to be Fitzgerald's time to uh, come right in. Yeah, I mean, look, I, Hines Ward is behind a couple receivers already um, who have a chance to get in before him. And I think he's up against that first. So I think every year until those guys get in, you're going to see other receivers getting in. I, I think it'll be a long time before Heinz Ward gets in. I get that he kind of changed the game a little bit, changed the position uh, with what he did and the way he played it. Uh, and he does have better stats than the couple guys that are ahead of him uh, right now. Uh, I think Torrey Holt's up for it. There's a couple other guys. Uh, but And Larry Fitzgerald, no doubt, in my mind, is a first ballot Hall of Famer. There's no question about it. Uh, we were just talking a little bit about the Hall of Fame today and, and talking more about the quarterbacks than anything else uh, up in our sports department, uh, debating on who were the greatest uh, quarterbacks of all times. And, you know, I, I, I personally think Ben Roethlisberger is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, Eli Manning would be up the year before and then Tom Brady the year after. But if something happens there, uh, I think they all should be first ballot guys. Uh, but if Eli Manning doesn't get in, he moves to Ben Roethlisberger's year, then potentially could take some votes away there. Uh, and who knows what happened. You would think one of them would get in. I, I think there's no question that Ben Roethlisberger should be a first ballot Hall of Famer, two Super Bowls and what he's done. Um, I, I still think Ben is a, t is a top 10 at worst, a top 15 quarterback of all time that have ever played the game. Um, and when you think about his generation, uh, he's definitely in the top five of, of quarterbacks that have played the game when he played and when he started. I mean, I think only maybe you can make the case that Tom Brady, uh, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers uh, might be the only guys that are better than him. You have Drew Brees in that category. Now, if you, if you count Patrick Mahomes, I think Patrick Mahomes is ahead of um, Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, I, I, right now, I'm putting Patrick Mahomes at number two all time. You might call me ridiculous, but I think it goes Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, and then we can start debating on who's after that. All right, let's go out to Frank. Frank Park, how you doing, Frank? Hey, I'm doing well. I just wanted to say, anybody who watched any of these games, how far the steel organization is uh, behind in terms of, you know, just uh, winning um, player personnel, the whole thing. And just a, another comment on that is the Steeler fans need to stop hating on the 49ers and let them tie or surpass us in Super Bowls. That's, that's a testimony, I think, too, to how far the organization has fallen in terms of prestige and, you know, being in the conversation as a, as a winning organization. Uh, I mean, I, I totally disagree with you, Frank. I don't think this organization has fallen, fallen far. I mean, maybe it has slipped a little, but I wouldn't say it's fallen. Um, I, you know, the 49ers have a good, a good organization, too, and they very well might win another Super Bowl. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the Steelers are that far away. I think, I mean, obviously this is a big position. They're a quarterback away, uh, for sure. Uh, you need to figure out that position. Uh, but they're also maybe an offensive coordinator away. I mean, they were close. They won games with one of the worst offenses that we've ever seen here in Pittsburgh. And they were in it, and they made the postseason. They have a pretty good defense. They dealt with a ton of injuries, especially up the middle on defense. Uh, they're inside linebackers. Uh, they're secondary. I mean, they were down to fourth and fifth safeties, third and fourth, fifth uh, inside linebackers. So I don't think they're far away when they're healthy. Yes, they're getting old, uh, older. You know, Cam Hayward's coming back for another year. They got to figure something out with this contract. They got to draft a defensive lineman high. They got to draft another offensive lineman high. They have pieces, but I don't think they're far away. And maybe, uh, maybe, uh, I don't totally disagree with everything you say, um, but I don't think that they're far away, and I don't think that they've fallen drastically. I think maybe if you add a couple coaches, you see a lot of these NFL teams, they have more assistant coaches than the Steelers. Maybe add a passing game coordinator, but you have to have an offensive coordinator. Um, you have to have one guy that everyone looks up to. Um, I don't think the two-guy system would work in the long run like the Mike Sullivan and Eddie Faulkner uh, kind of system. Both guys did a good job filling in the last few games of the year. But I think you need one guy that runs a show on offense, and I hope Mike Tomlin gives him the reins and lets him run the offense the way he wants to run the offense, and it's not too conservative. You saw what happened at the end of the year with Mason Rudolph. Uh, they needed to win those games, and, and you could see that it was a little more confident offense, and it felt a little bit better. And when I went in the locker room, you could tell the players were excited. The players liked it better. 
Um, you could feel it was a different atmosphere in there than when Kenny Pickett was the quarterback. Um, and I'm not saying Kenny Pickett might not be the quarterback. Maybe he is the he's, he's definitely going to have a shot at being the starting quarterback next year. But I don't think they're that far off. Yes, you need a starting quarterback. But if you have some pieces around you and you have a guy that's a game manager like a Mason Rudolph did the last few weeks of the year, uh, you know, they might get 10, 11 wins. Uh, and it, as long as you can sneak into the playoffs, you don't know what can happen. I mean, the Steelers are good against the Ravens. The Ravens are going to be good for the next few years as long as they have Lamar Jackson. Um, you know, you got you to gotta be able to beat the Buffaloes of the world. You got to be able to beat uh, the, the Kansas Cities of the world. Uh, you got to have an offense that can score points. And I think that's the problem with the Steelers. They didn't have that offense that could really come back, especially early in the season. Uh, you, need, you need an offense that's able to score with teams like this if your defense can't hold that offense down. I mean, I, I know Cam Hayward has always told me that they want to keep teams to 17 points. That's their goal. That's the defense that they think they have. So if you can keep teams to 17 points, the Steelers didn't do it often this year, but if you can keep teams to 17 points, that gives you a fighting chance. All right, we got to take a break. 412-575-2600 is the number back in a couple minutes.